Hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Chili, you have to let go of me now because I am live and streaming. Hey, AJ, thank you for moderating my stream again. Welcome, everybody, to tonight's stream about some more operating rules in the German railway um, system. Uh, the disclaimer. We are obviously only talking about computer games, not about handling real trains and real railway installations. So please leave those things to the professionals who are charged with dealing with this. So only try this at home in the safety of your simulated universe. Theodoros, great you made it. Spectre, hey, hey good evening. And... Uh, yeah, welcome to the stream and some more stuff that is getting me to the boundaries of what I can understand as n a not trained professional about the German railway operation rules. CD Raider says, Neznashim Vaj! Neznashim? Wasn't that I hate? I cannot stand this. <laughs> Tell me, what was this? Nes Nashim was, I think, I cannot stand. Is it? <laughs> well, maybe I cannot. I cannot understand it, probably. I thought Nes Nashim Pivo means I can't stand beer, but obviously I'm confusing things again. So, not only the boundaries of railway operation rules, but also my boundaries of understanding anything in the Czech language. <laughs> I bought the Maintalbahn. Here, Maintalbahn, Aschaffenburg, Miltenberg, and also some more DLCs. So that I have more stuff to do. I actually thought I play something in the Rapid Transit. Leipzig, but this takes forever driving for for example the 182 because you're constantly in a, a restricted monitoring and you're not getting your ass on the road. Well, never mind, um, we will get back to this sometime else. Rapid Transit, the OG route. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is actually challenging getting this route somewhere and um, getting your train there without being more than three minutes late or whatever. Um, maybe we will come back to this sometime else, but no. Th today we are playing Weintal Route. It is easier. And uh, since the presentation part will be quite challenging, at least for me, um, it should not be so super complicated. What we do on the train. So what will we choose? Let's choose something springy with a bit clouds. Mindalbahn and this. Chili, I need my second hand now. I can't go on. Patting your head. Mm -hmm. Gotta give me a break now. Yeah. Just sit down in your bed. Yeah, Meintalban. In case someone was wondering, it is not a secondary line, it is not a nebenbahn, it is actually a main line, even though it is for the most part only one track. And for understanding things that I want to talk about today, it is actually not so bad to have some um, simple track layout here. Sometimes it's weird when you're doing the, the journey mode, you want to run something with the Desiro, the Siemens Desiro, as they say in the introduction, and then you end up in a 612 Euro Swinger train, Pendolino train, if you want it well whatever if you go in the timetable it obviously works as you can see already it is the desiro classic 
Same family as the class 700. A follow follow wedge. What did you say about a follow wedge, AJ? Yeah, guys, thank you for following Super Paul 5000 Bingo 9600. Um, no, I'm so, I'm sorry, AJ. I don't see stuff like this. Sometimes it is getting displayed somewhere, but uh, sometimes not. Oh, I already started it and started talking and I am obviously always too late and thank you Tronic John if you were watching this for the sub very much appreci appreciated and uh, everybody else who is watching very much appreciated to have your company and your attention so we're starting our Siemens Desiro classic train with turning the key and then we can already open the doors for our passengers here the door control with this button actually works, I think, as intended. They worked on the indicators so that you really can't miss them. You see, even the test works now. They are so super bright that nobody can actually miss them anymore. The parking brake is typically on on this train. You need to switch on the headlights. The Ebula still does not work and they are writing the B with a small one instead of a capital one so oh maybe I should open the door at the side where the passengers are and not on the last on, on the left one because it is here not like it is on the talent that I was thinking where this thing has to go into the direction where the people are arrogant smooth forehead hey nice to have you on the chat and on the stream and cd raider says i saw this thing in prague recently under a riva flag flag the little diesel classic one <coughs> well i'm going a lot on the 1462 Baureihe, the zero high, cap high capacity train and that is obviously a, a different ship than this diesel variant here that we have so maybe I should focus a bit lock all that is good and uh, unlock both I'm doing rather well Eric thank you for asking oh it's Eric K Gant sorry for skipping the A is it the first time that I see it or did you just change it <coughs> Before we go into into the game photo mode, wondering what kind of signal that we are actually getting started at. You remember the stream about the white lights on the signals? This is a Zugdeckungssignal that starts us with a Kennlicht. It is a main signal, as you can see, and we will talk not in this stream, but on. Oh, you have multiple names. That is okay. Wonderful. And this is what it shows if it is showing stop, HP0. And if it is showing go, it is showing the Kennlicht, the marker light. And there is a special rule for starting your train when you are started at the Kennlicht main signal. If it is an exit signal, a starter signal or a intermediate signal, a zwischen signal. We will talk about this n in the next stream about this because it is actually such a long story that I have to cut it into two streams, I guess. Yeah. So, am I good to start? Let's hope I did not forget anything. And this train actually starts. Yes, it starts. When we are getting started at an intermediate signal show in Kenlich, as far as I know, we are supposed to not go faster than 40 until we get to the next main signal. What is already coming up? KS1, main and distance signal with a set of three, Kenzal 6, allowing us to go 60 now. Oh, I did not even turn on the PCB. Oh, 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 oh. And the CIFA, can I do this when running the train? Or am I dying now already? No, it just worked. Work, work, work! Is 
so I have to give my train on the way a bit because it is not a really the quickest train to accelerate and then I will read the chat my day has been decent I ate some good food I did some work I accidentally inhaled aerosol and I feel weird says Eric against smooth forehead all right then I hope this aerosol was not too bad T comes and says hello nice to have you on the chat and uh, Theodore says, if I'm not mistaken, I see videos about real-life train drivers driving this train on YouTube. Hey, uh, I'm really envious that there are so many people who have trains in World 4. I would also like to have it. Well, then buy it now. It is 70% off at the moment on Steam. I'm sorry to hear that. <sighs> Eric is gonna get some uh, water entirely disconnected from the real world floating in space. <laughs> okay, do that. And we are... And this is another weird thing that I want to point out. This time... Oh, I would like to sponsor you the game, but I'm afraid I don't have any access to that. If I was an ambassador, maybe. But since I'm freelancing on this, completely financing this. Sometimes it is for free on Epic Game Store, not... Well, the last time Train Symbol 2 was, ge was free on Epic Game Store. <coughs> this is obviously a distant signal repeater, right? It does not have an NE2 board and it has the white light underneath the signal screen. And um, the interesting fact is, where is the distance signal that it is supposed to repeat? There is no distance signal that it is supposed to repeat. More like we are seeing the NE3 um, distance signal announcement boards and what comes a repeater. So that is obviously something weird. Nevertheless, we have to slow down to the 50 here. Since we got our 1000 hertz monitoring, we have to stay below the 80. Then we are good until we get to the signal that is actually slowing us down to the 50 so that we can enter the track. The route looks quite decent, totally. Some kids took the distance signal plate, yes, and the signal was smart enough to add the uh, little light below to compensate for the missing sig uh, distance signal plate. Combined, main and distant, with five. I almost acknowledged it because in Munich and Leipzig, you always need to be wary that the thousand hertz magnets are active even on the green lights. Some buildings are cloned along the map. <laughs> So, with all this talking and stuff, we are obviously late. Here is the 50 kilometer switch that the signal warned us about. And can anyone, and any one of you guys use this driver's brake with the keyboard shortcuts? 
because I have not found out a way to use this driver's brake with the, sh with the keyboard shortcuts properly. I'm always stopping with the... combined brake handle. Because the problem is, if you use the apply thing, you can go into zero and then you would go on but as soon as you hold it to pump in more, you're already in the fast brake mode. So this is a bit... A bit weird, at least for the, sh the keyboard shorts. <sighs> Started at the green signal with... I set this... Three showing five, that means 50 until we're out of the ensuing interlockings, the anschließende Weichenbereich, what we have talked about a couple of streams ago. 50 because we are going back across the switch on our unidirectional track. <clears throat> and as soon as the train has left the switch and the ensuing interlockings here the other thing that I already put on the feedback, tr feedback track is for some reason we are in an era when Bavaria was part of Austria because why can I not go there with the camera they are using ÖBB signs here Halt für Verschubfahrten <clears throat> you remember we had this on our ÖBB signaling stream in Austria they call the shunting services not Rangierfahrten but Verschubfahrten and for some reason they are used the Austrian signals here and it is throughout the whole route as far as I have seen it should be halt für Rangierfahrten because we are in Germany and not halt für Verschubfahrten at least not if there is something weird going on on this track here live on such a spectator live on the people in northern Bavaria would be super happy to belong to Austria and see the radar says unidirectional one train is delayed all trains are delayed yes and so when I'm delay delaying all the trains here we should already be in a Laudenbach The radar says I live on unidirectional route and you are always delaying. <laughs> no, you live there, I know. You're not driving the trains there. Imagine unidirectional metro lines. That would be scary, wouldn't it? <laughs> can you be a passenger in some train or maybe a conductor? Um, yes, you can be a passenger in the trains. You can spawn on foot and then enter any train you want and be a passenger on them and there is one DLC where you can be a guard what is more or less what in different countries is called a conductor and you can check tickets and bust the train off that would be the glossop line Again, trying. Yeah, I'm not applying any power. Thank you very much. OK, 
Okay. Here, even with setting it to zero, it stopped the train properly. Well, this driver assist I, I, is still. I always wonder why there is not a button where you can turn this thing off because it is the most annoying thing that they ever added to this game. Thank you for nothing, driver assistant. Yes. And CD Raider says when I was in Amsterdam in the summer there was a, there was a some closure and there was one track for both directions at one station. At the metro! Oh! Holy moly. The diesel sound is great, yes. It reminds me a lot of the uh, Alstom Coradia Lint 41 and 54 trains. Baureihe 648 and 622, if I'm not mistaken. Welcome back, Eric. But they use CPT, yeah, communication based train control, so it is safe. I guess it is. Well, we just found some Erica. Yeah, today Erica. Maybe Eric is short for Erica. And Theodora says, I'd love to bike on that scenery. Yeah. Mainfranken is a very scenic area. So many people here as a CD radio. Yeah, so much going on on the chat. I can hardly drive because I have to read the chat. <coughs> That's why we're late in stopping all people. Klingenberg is the next one. America is boring, says Erica. I don't know. I definitely would like to see them, America. In real life. But actually, I would like to see so many places on Earth. And the CD Raider says it's exactly because he does not like the American content in Trains in World 4. It is bad to get high on deodorant, man, cause headache. Well, then don't do it! Don't get high on stuff. Rather drive trains. Slow down to 60. Well, I guess the presentation today will get you back down from your high. Hey, <laughs> Jesus, can confirm. Because she already had to have a first impression of it. Here is the combined main and distance signal with the white 660 from here. Even though it does not translate in the game. The signal speed is 60 from here because we are going across the switch where we are dropping suddenly to a 60 limit. Yeah, it does brain damage. Most probably does. Here look, we have a water sled. For the swimming pool here, but nobody is sliding. Now it is raining. Oh, I have not used the, dry, uh, the wiper so far. Here is the switch. Why we got stopped short.
so... I tried to get on the slide and then I had trouble getting back on the track because of that curb. <laughs> okay. Six twelve overtaking, yeah. So, the diesel sound is great, but the diesel acceleration is always like a leaden duck. Well, cats, you can buy them now. I always found that weird too, that you can buy animals. So, ride it like you stole it, yes. You actually have to push those diesel thingies. Why bother? On the other hand, I saw a, a, a real train driver drive uh, uh, trucks too on the rest, and I think. And, well, he was pushing this thing. AFB on, and then power to 100%. Chuck! The train started... Approaching the station, dynamic brake, max, until the train was almost in position, and then air brake to four. Yeah, why not? I tried this on the rapid transit, and it actually works. And with the um, e-brake on the max, you did not even get wheel slips in the snow or on wet track. You need to be careful with the acceleration on snow and wet track, but the braking was no problem at all. And CD Radar says the train is const constructed to use it. Yeah, it is not necessary what they tell you in the in in introductions, right? In the in the introductions, they typically tell you to apply a little amount of brake force to come to a nice and gentle stop. And first apply like 20% of power. <coughs> and then they are beating the train along the line so presentation presentation time i don't know which presentation was it the first one the euro says it is like cheap budget airline landing <laughs> okay i'm not so familiar with the cheap budget airline landings um what i wanted to talk about today is a bit um, more rather complicated stuff but it is interesting because it connects some dots that we have already talked about anschließender weichenbereich and on interlockings we have talked about we have talked about kinlicht we have talked about a sat signal set as one the replacement signal and uh, if you mm, remember maybe i said i'm not entirely sure where the rules are for how to behave after you got started with a, a sat signal or you uh, we're allowed to enter a station on a such signal and where it comes from that you have to stick to 40 and where exactly this is uh, in the rules and now I think I have figured this out because I came across the thing of yeah, Zugfahrten mit besonderem Auftrag, train services on special assignment and um, 
I think I can connect the dots now so that it makes sense. Unfortunately, we won't see not a lot of it in the game. And uh, we will see why we're not seeing this in the game, because it's actually for um, cases when something goes wrong in the signal box logic and uh, in the installation there. So I want to start with uh, repeating, recapping what it was with the interlocking Uh, with the ensuing interlocking, the anschließend the Weichen Bereich, what always told us how f um, how long do we have to adhere to a speed limit that a signal is giving us, the white number that we have seen a couple of times here in the game, how long this is valid. We had a, uh, um, a separate video about this, so I will be quite quick on that. So this was our um, example track here, so we are coming this way on the bidirectional On a, on a line with two tracks, uh, one for each direction. There is a junction coming in, then there is a little station with um, platforms, there is a siding and there is a crossover. And we talked about that you're coming in first, what you're getting before actually hitting the home signal is in the typical 1000 meters uh, regular break distance, a distance signal. Uh, flashing KS1 in the KS system. Here the kids did not steal the board and the yellow number telling you that you have to prepare for a slowdown to 80. And before you get into the station, you hit the home signal, the Einfahrsignal, um, allowing you to enter with a green light, a KS1, not flashing, steady. And now the white eye telling you from here, you have to stick to the 80 and then you're going pass this home signal to your stopping point and maybe you stop there and then you get started after your stop is done uh, with another signal typically starter signal Ausfahr signal and then again KS1 here uh, allowing you to go and uh, telling you stick to 60 and then it was important to know how long do we have to stick to the 60 when can we accelerate and uh, We have talked about that when you're getting in a station or a protected area, when you're passing a home signal or an intermediate signal, it would be a signal that is subdividing the station area, then you have to stick to this speed limit until you are at the next uh, main signal, next main signal. So this, this is typically the mast sign that Uh, tells you that the signal is a main signal. We have also seen that there is an exception if you are actually stopping here regularly, then the ensuing Weichenbereich, the interlockings, end here and also ends the uh, order that you have been given by this signal. So this 80 is no longer valid after you stopped here. Why is that? Um, because we have in the rules that the new signal when you're getting started at a station that the speed that the new signal is uh, allowing you is not only valid when you pass the signal but it is also governing this little remaining blue uh, distance here from starting your train until you get to the signal so in case your train can actually can do it you are not allowed to accelerate to 100 and then screech break back to the 60 when you pass the signal this is al already governing this 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 uh, distant here <clears throat> and then it would be quite um, annoying if you had to stick to the 60 until you get to the next main signal that can be somewhere along the track um, because this 60 is slowing you down because you are going across switches and as soon as you're on the open track uh, after the switch is, end, switch is ended you should be able to go to line speed and not, not, not uh, move like a snail until you get to the next main signal. This is why we have the rule that on an exit signal, on a starter signal, Ausfall signal, the Weichenbereich typically ends as soon as your last axle has passed the last switch in the path and then there is no reason to stick to this speed anymore and you can accelerate to line speed until you get a new limit. And <clears throat> this uh, spot is typically in your Ebula or your Buchfahrplan marked with the Yen sign. Then we have also learned that if there are no switches then the 
starter signal itself is the ensuing weichen Bereich. That means you have to pass with your whole train this spot where the signal is and then you can accelerate. Um, and we have also learned that we can shorten this distance if there is no reason to actually stick to this speed on this fish, for example, here where you're only going straight on this switch and can't be actually sent <coughs> to the other line, then you can shorten this, put this yen marked spot closer to the signal from which the uh, speed limit comes and uh, to mark this in the real world we can put up an isolated set as three sign giving us a new speed this is where the number 16 on a set as three makes sense only and um, you can also in the west of germany at least use this set as 10 sign that we have talked about <coughs> on the uh, hamburg lübeck line i think we've talked about this so this would be the fifth rule that we can uh, that we can have here on home signals typically until the next main or shorter green one if we stop at a regular stopping point on exit signals or other signals that you encounter on the open track like on junctions for example or stuff like this until you are through the uh, switches through the interlockings and then you can accelerate again and if this is actually too long and we want to make everything a bit faster and allow the trains to accelerate f faster then this would be the pink one and in case there are no interlockings at all then it is our signal itself and the last one makes sense because the train has to have completely cleared the weichenbereich the interlockings before you can accelerate to be exact it is the last axle of your train that has to have passed the switch and then you can accelerate. But obviously this is just a little, little distance between the last axle and the actual end of the train. I don't even know if they are simulating this in the game typically. Um, if you accelerate as soon as the train is passed, then you are not giving away too much. Um, last axle, why? Because obviously the axles on the switches is the thing that slows you down in germany we do not have like on many american routes um signaling speed signaling that comes from traffic like on the northeast corridor we get this all the time we're getting decreasing signals because we are running up to trains in front of us because they have this permissive block system where this makes sense we usually always have an absolute block system this is why we are not getting speed signaling due to traffic but typically always speed signaling because of the pathing and the switches that we have to go through <coughs> or that we are prepared for a speed limit that is coming up and slowed down yeah uh, what is the thing that happens here when we are getting signals of that kind this is when the dispatcher is allowing us to go by putting a signal to a proceed aspect, typically a green or sometimes a yellow, a, si a signal that allows us to go, so not a stop signal. A main signal put to a proceed aspect and then we can um, start driving. And this is what happens in the game almost all the time that we are sent on, on our way by putting um, proceed aspect on the main signal. And what is the nice thing about this when we are getting started by Fahrtstellung eines Hauptsignals, it tells us that all the logic in the signaling boxes and the dispatcher himself have checked that a lot of things have already been provided for. The technology in the signaling box and the dispatcher made sure that our path is clear, that there is no other train or car or whatever, a snowplow like we had in Chicago a couple of months ago um, on the track. No, the track is clear. All the track circuits are telling the signaling box we have a clear track. Obviously, there can still be mistakes because of sanding, for example, but... <clears throat> we can be reasonably sure that the track is clear. 
We can also be reasonably sure that all the switches are aligned because the switches also have sensors in them that tell the signaling box and the dispatcher how they are aligned. And so if they are aligned in the proper way, then all green and this has been uh, made sure. And also flank protection. When we are getting started, it is also made sure that no other train has a green signal and the switches are aligned in a way that a different train can drive in our flank from the side or from the opposite direction or whatever. Our path is protected from the sides, from the flanks. <clears throat> Otherwise, the dispatcher could not have put our signal into a proceed aspect. The technology in the signaling box would prevent that. If the dispatcher tries to, yeah, okay, let, let this guy go with his train so that we are getting anywhere, wants to put in the Fahrstraße, it doesn't work if those things are not provided for. Then there's more like, but it does not work. We cannot, put, we cannot put the signal to a proceed aspect. It stays at red. So, when we are getting started with a signal of that kind in the situation where the rules for the anschließenden Weichenbereich apply, then we can always be sure that those three things at least have been taken care of. If there are uh, level crossings, and typically they are in this thing also, and uh, different other things more, we can be sure that the signaling box technology and the dispatcher both have made sure that there is no danger on our way to the next main signal. But what actually happens if for some reason the dispatcher wants to allow us in the station or wants to um, allow us to start our journey after we stopped at the station and for some reason he cannot set the Fahrstraße, he cannot set the signals to a proceed aspect. Then one option is to say, okay, something got wrong, we call it a day and uh, tell the passengers um, may maybe come back next week until we figured out what is wrong and the maintenance guys um, take some time. That is obviously an option, but it is not a great option because you want to still run your trains and this is why there are some rules for <clears throat> how you can still allow trains to go into the station and leave the station, even if for some reason, because some sensor in a switch broke or some track circuit is mis uh, malfunctioning or something in the flank protection is not working properly. And this is why the signaling box uh, logic does not allow to be the main signal set to a uh, proceed aspect, how can we still allow a train to go then? And there are obviously rules for the dispatches, what they have to make sure um, before they can allow a train to go anyway. Sometimes there are additional secondary technical um, devices that still make sure that it is safe enough to start a train anyway. But in this situation we start with the problem that we do not know if our track is clear, we do not know if the switches are properly aligned and we are not sure if we are protected from uh, other movements that are maybe coming into our side, in our flank. So what would the dispatcher do? Probably he would look out of his window and make sure is the track actually clear what is the problem is there something on the track why is it not working and this is the whole realm of train services on special assignment Zugfahrt auf besonderen Auftrag and there is actually quite a plethora of different ways to allow the train and they are all connected with those three things. What do we know about the track ahead? Do we know if the track is clear? Do we know if the switches are aligned properly? Do we know if frank protection is provided? And depending on what we know and what we do not know, uh, we can get different ways of uh, how we have to behave after passing a signal. And I cut this uh, thing in, in, in two blocks and today I want to talk about a situation where the dispatcher can actually send us on with the Zetas 1 Ersatz signal, the replacement signal that we have talked about. And this 
actually provides if he can make sure that at least the track is clear by looking out of the window seeing that there is no vehicle on the track um, maybe with some secondary technical stuff that tells you yes the track is clear but a switch is not aligned properly even though everybody tells you that the switches are aligned probably the technical devices no i can't i cannot i cannot make for sure that the switches are aligned probably properly so we know that the track is clear at least in this situation the dispatcher can send us into the station or out of the station onto the open track with the set this one as signal on the ks signals we have this as this white flashing light on the main signal. We have seen this in this one stream that we made about the white lights on the signals. There is one scenario that I know of in the game with the Vectron in Dresden where you enter Risa station on a replacement signal, not on a KS signal, but on a HL signal, but it looks more or less the same red light with a white flashing light on it. Obviously this can happen on the home signal, this can also happen on the starter signal. It theoretically it can happen on every other next uh, main signal that, that you encounter, but every time the dispatcher has to make sure that even though his uh, logic in the signaling box does tell him that um, all those requirements are not met, he is still confident enough to send you on the way because he can ascertain that at least the track is clear. But how do we have to behave after passing a signal like this? Do the rules for the anschließenden Weichenbereich also apply then? And actually they did until December 2015 as far as I know if I ever uh, read this correctly. Until then the Anschließende Weichenbereich, the ensuing interlocking rules also applied for what you have to do after a SAT signal. But uh, then 2015, this thing got uh, its own rule in the operating rules in the Fahrdienstrichtlinie, Richtlinie 408. You can see it here, what I'm using, what I'm referring to, module 2456. This is where some things for train service and special assignment are set out. So we have different rules and let's check how many of our rules for the Anschließenden Weichenbereich apply to driving on a replacement signal. One thing that is the general rule that we got on our way when we are passing a signal with replacement signal, we are slowed down to 40. We cannot go faster than 40, but we also do not have to drive on site necessarily unless we get additional orders. But if we only get the replacement signal, we don't need to drive on site. Why is that? Because of this here, down there. The dispatcher made sure that the track is clear, so we don't have to drive on site. But we don't know if the switches are aligned properly, so it's po pro possible that we are going actually the wrong way across a switch. And this is where the 40 kilometers come in, because all the switches on the main railways that are used are uh, typically, or always, I'm actually not sure, but typically built in a way that they can be actually be crossed. Um, with 40 kilometers without the train derailing. So every switches that you might, or all the switches that you might encounter allow a passing with at least 40 kilometers. And this is where the 40 kilometers come from. We don't need to drive on site because we know that the Fahrweg is clear and um, we have to stick to the 40 because we do not know if the switches are aligned properly. This is more or less, it's obviously always always more complicated but from coming from the general lines this is actually making sense a lot and then if we look at the the ruling that is given for how long you have to stick to the 40 then we find um, rules that are quite similar to the ones that we know for the anschließenden Weichenbereich, but a little bit different. So if we are passing a home signal going into a station, then the blue situation 
uh, is exactly the same with a 40. We have to go 40 until the next main signal. What does not apply is this rule for the um, for the regular stopping position. This is no longer in it. So whether we're stopping or not, we have to go 40 until we get to the next main signal. So if we are entering the station on a SAT signal and we are starting here, and even if we are getting a green signal then for, for starting, we still have to stick to the 40 uh, until we get to this signal. Maybe there is a switch in front of the signal between our stopping position and the signal. And this switch is misaligned, then we it is good that we stick to the 40. If the signal, for example, is already giving us a high green and we can accelerate with 80 out of the station. This is, I think, at least this is what I'm getting together in my head, the rule why this green rule, the one for the stopping position, does not apply for entering a station with a placement signal. When we are started with uh, replacement signals and we came into the station on a green light, for example, stopped, and then we cannot get started with the green light and are getting the replacement signal here, then we have, oh, we come back to this later, in uh, the same rule that we had for getting started with a uh, white six, for example, then the 40 already apply for this little distance between the stopping position and the signal. <coughs> But unlike in my example, we do not necessarily have both signals here on replacement signal. Typically, one of them works properly and the other one not. So, what is with our rule here, the yellow rule or orange rule for when we're getting started with a um, replacement signal? Does this work? It more or less works the same way here. Last switch in the path or another sto a spot mark with a yen sign in the timetable. And then those signs do not apply to um, train service on special assignments. So it is more or less put a bit the other way around. For the anschließende Weichenbereich, those signs can stop or, or cut it short, the anschließende Weichenbereich. And um, then we put this sign in our timetable and for train services and special assignment, we say those signs are not relevant, but we go by the marking in the timetable. So it might often get to the same point, but the other way around. And this is why we do not have this rule for if it is only the starter signal and we do not have this pink rule for cutting it short and those signs are not of any relevance for your train service and special assignment but the yen sign in the abula or your book for plan is and this leaves you with those four possibilities again when going into the station the whole way until you get to the next main and if you're getting out of the station typically last switch in the path unless you get a yen sign in the abula before you get to the last switch. And uh, still the train must have cleared the end completely. So this is not different, but there is one exception if you're actually um, passing block signals on the open track, except at junctions, then only until the tip of the train has passed. This is um, a little exception here. That means that you're actually not at all bound to the 40 kilometers because then you are um, sent on from a stopping position, maybe or a rolling position. Well, if you're going faster than, uh, than, than, than 40, then you obviously have to slow down to the 40, probably. I don't know. Until... That's an interesting question. But at any rate, as soon as the tip of your train has passed the signal on the open track, you don't need to stick to the 40. Why? Because there are no junk, there are no switches that, that you can um, uh, probably be going over in the wrong alignment, I guess. But again, I'm 
talking about this stuff from reading the rules and watching the other video on YouTube, for example. And uh, <laughs> hey, Erica, you returned once again. You missed a lot of interesting information. The others have already fallen asleep. But nevertheless, I'm going on with this because um, it is actually telling us a lot for how the logic of slowing. <laughs> you, you watched great. Great to hear. <laughs> when I need. Well, I think this is really giving us a lot of uh, uh, insight in, into the logics of uh, and um, and uh, of uh, speed restrictions and why do we have speed restrictions at all and then of what kind it is not totally arbitrary and not uh, just because of uh, we, we have to give some speed restriction but it is connected with how fast can i go across a misaligned switch for example or do i need to go on site because i do not know if the track is clear <laughs> i help with pcp happy to hear that erica well if you get started yeah it is here now um i already said this when we get started as uh, at the replacement signal we are already bound to the 40 until we get to the signal so for this little distance this is more like the parallel rule that we already have for getting started at the proceed aspect signal was that already what i wanted to talk about um no i'm not sure i know there is something more that i wanted to talk about the four signal function the 40 kilometers are great but at the moment we were assuming that the next main signal is green what is if for some reason the next main signal is red and uh, we're getting started and if we are getting a distant signal until we get to the next main signal this is not a problem actually and um, because then we get our yellow signal or we are zero for example or ks2 in front before we get to the next main signal and we can slow down properly the problem that we are getting is if this signal the starter signal the one that did not work that the dispatcher did not couldn't set to a proceed aspect but had to send us on the way with the replacement signal also has a distant signal functionality a four signal function then we are not getting a distant signal until we get to the next main signal and then we cannot see it because the red light here is covering up the distant signal functionality that we typically would get because we are only getting the replacement signal and then we do not know what we uh, would have seen on the distant signal in case it had not been distorted. <laughs> you should be a railway worker or are you? No, I'm not. I'm not a railway or railroader at all. I'm just a general smart <laughs> in those in those things. Um, no, actually, I, I am interested in the stuff because I'm playing the game and um, I like digging into the rules and finding out stuff and then discussing it with you guys. So occasionally someone who really knows about this stuff comes across my videos and tells me more and uh, other people other enthusiasts can tell me more and point out what i got wrong and and this is what i what i totally enjoy here um I also this distance signal functionality thing here the problem is if this signal if the starter signal has a distance signal functionality then we are not getting a new warning because before we are hitting the red signal here and um, then we might accelerate as soon as we are out of our pseudo anschließende Weichenbereich. As soon as we are across the last switch in the path and accelerate to line speed 160, we turn around a corner and hit a red signal. And this is obviously a problem. So if this signal has a distance signal functionality, we need to uh, take special precautions. This signal, as it is depicted here with the main uh, signal mass sign, uh, white, red, white, and uh, no VR signal head, does not have any distance signal functionality. But red signals can have a distance signal functionality. Just look at... I'd hate to see what railway you'd create in transport. <laughs> I actually thought about this. Um, 
but uh, there are people who are creating much 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 nastier railways like for example Noir had a, a picture of, of what he created in Transport Field the other day on, on my Discord server. It was really interesting um, and impressive. Impressive. But now let me talk about the distance, distance signal functionality. What signals can have a distance signal functionality? In the KS system, like this is the KS system with a flashing white light. Um, KS, red with a flashing white can have a distance signal functionality if we have this downward pointing yellow triangle. Then this in the KS system is not only a main signal, but also a distance signal. No distance signal board, but um, uh, at the same time giving you the combined uh, information about the main signal part and the distance signal part. On the HL system, almost all HL systems uh, signals have a distance signal functionality because you remember we have one lamp telling you what to expect at the next signal and one lamp telling you what you have to do now in the H system and um, we also get the flashing white on the HL systems for replacement signal and they also have this downward pointing yellow triangle even if it is on black ground on the HL Sys, uh, signals on the HV it is even more simple the HV system would have if it is an HP zero of the old style the two lamps at least in the west and we would typically get Noir corrected me on my video about the Assad signal totally correctly that on HV signals all the ones that we encounter in real life you don't get the flashing white light but the three white lamps in the yeah, delta formation here as the Assad signal although the rules would allow them to have a flashing white uh, one but since we are not getting new HV signals this is what we can encounter in real life for the replacement signal and the HV signal has a distant signal functionality if we have a VR signal head on it. And this one, as we all know, is typically dark if the signal is showing red. So if you are started at a signal of that kind with a replacement signal, with a SAT signal, then you don't know what information the distant signal functionality would have given you. Like, for example, if this signal is red, then for example, this signal would have shown in the KS system something like this, a KS2, a yellow aspect. The 6 is not so important because this is just for how you are supposed to leave the station. But this KS2, the yellow lamp here, telling you, you can proceed. It is still a proceed aspect. Um, but distance signal functionality, be, be prepared to stop at the next signal. For the HL, you would have maybe gotten something like this, the lower part telling you you can go 60 here, yellow with yellow band, but be prepared to stop at the next signal, the upper lamp telling you. On the HV, you might have gotten this, you can leave here with 40, or if the timetable tells you 60 is allowed, then with 60, but the VR0 telling you that you have to be prepared to stop um, at the next signal. So here we have a signal, uh, distance signal functionality, here we have a distance signal functionality, and here we have a distance signal functionality. And all this is masked and hidden if the signal cannot be set to proceed aspect and we are getting started with a replacement signal. And how do we deal with this? We have to take into account that we probably have to stop at the next main signal. So what are we doing? First, we are doing this. We are sticking to 40 kilometers. <laughs> if I became minister for railway, green would mean stop and red would mean proceed. Just to be funny, says Erica. Good thing you're not m confusing the American railroad, uh, railroad signaling even more as it is and the code of federal regulation tells us at least that much that you cannot turn those two around so <laughs> but if you would be secretary of transportation then you could actually change it because you could advise the fda 
to change the code of federal regulations as much as I understand the American legal system. Good thing you're not. Well, how do we deal with our distance signal functionality here? First, we have obviously to stick to the 40 because we still don't know if the switches are aligned. Then we are out of our switches. We are out of this uh, section here. And then we would typically accelerate to line speed, what we can do, but we still have to stay in this case at maximum 40 until we get to the next signal so that we can see and read its aspect. So we would not accelerate as soon as we are out of the switches, but stick to 40 or even less until we get to the next main signal aspect and can read its aspect. So even less if we are approaching the signal in a way that we could not stop in front of it with 40, then we have to slow down even more. We have to drive in a way that we can stop at the red signal on the next main signal um, and not go faster than 40, even though we are already out of the switches. Uh, a rule that allows us to go faster again is this interesting rule maximum two kilometers so we are going max for ma for maximum uh, for a maximum of two kilometers we are sticking to the 40. why is that this interesting 2000 meter rule that you can sometimes read this is because it is excluded in the way that the railways are built in Germany, that there is a distance of more than 2,000 meters between the distance signal and the main signal that it refers to. So if you pass a distance signal and you're not hitting a main signal that is governed by this distance signal after 2,000 uh, 2, meters, 2 kilometers, then you can be pretty sure that you either missed the main signal, didn't see it at all, and since you did not get stopped by a 2000 Hz magnet, it wasn't so bad, or that for some reason there is no main signal coming anymore, and you can be sure that you're getting a new distance signal before you're hitting the next main signal. This is, as far as I understood, the uh, the sense in this um, 2000 meter uh, ruling. So if we are getting started at a signal that has a distance signal functionality, and we know that because we either see this downward facing um, yellow triangle or we see the dark VR uh, signal head on the signal here, then we do not <coughs> only have to adhere to the 40 until we are out of the switches or past the point marked with the yen, but also have to stick to the 40 and even slow down in a way that we can stop at the next main signal in case it is red until we can see it and make sure that it is not red, that it allows us to proceed. <coughs> and if we are, if we have actually driven 2000 meters with the 40 kilometers and we did not, um, we did not uh, hit a new main signal, then we can go back to line speed and just rely on getting a new distance signal before we can actually hit the next potentially red main signal. That's it for today in my presentation. I hope this was not too boring or confusing. Um, the sad thing is that actually in the game we won't really need all this information because um, this would now, maybe we will get it in the future. This, in my opinion, this would be a great thing for scripted scenarios where you get a replacement signal instead of um, a proceed aspect uh, when when starting your train from from a stop. Typically, the routing in in in, in Transim world, as far as I understood, this works in a way that the signal aspect that you are getting displayed is always connected with the route that you are sent on, on the track system. So that you are typically not getting any uh, replacement signal or Vorsicht signal unless this is connected with the route that they sent you. At least this is what I have well, learned from 
playing around with the editor so far. So this would be something that needs to be scripted in the game or for, uh, like we added in the Nidertalbahn, for a random element. So sometimes um, there is an error, the logic in the signal box does not work properly and then we are getting started with a replacement signal. And then we need to know um, then we need to know how to deal with this. And um, next time on the next stream when we are getting back to this in case someone is still interested in learning then we will actually learn how we can deal with the fact that the dispatcher cannot even ascertain that the track is clear and that track switches and flank protection is all unclear and then obviously the solution will be not only stick to 40 but also on site we always be prepared to stop in case there is an obstacle on the track this would be the set of seven Vorsicht signal and how to deal with that exactly and why we are driving until the next main signal plus 400 meters uh, or train length whatever is longer this we will discuss in the next uh, part of this and then we also will have a look at all the different ways and rules for starting a train with proceed aspect with replacement signal with caution signal at the Kennlicht, for example, because there is a special rule for starting a train at the Kennlicht, or like we have seen this last week, that we are not started as a train service at all, but at a, as a shunting service with clear track announced or clear track not announced. So actually uh, quite a lot of different ways that you can start driving on your route. But now back to the train. And Tui Roro says, I'm not sleeping. My high school principal told me in Europe, people listen to the full information before reply and ask questions. Don't know how truthful that is, but some of his lessons stuck with me. I agree. That is that is typically true. When when I'm... Well, most of the time, actually. When, when I'm giving lectures somewhere in, in real life, this is what people typically do. They listen and afterwards they ask questions or even more if... The moderator says, and now, um, actually, there is time for some questions. Are there any? Nobody says anything, but then you step down from the podium, and uh, then a lot of people come to you and ask questions, and because they did not want to ask them in front of the others. Hold on, my anxiety through the fucking roof, says Erica. Okay. <laughs> And I even did not get you down from your high with this longish presentation. No, I totally appreciate it. But obviously, I don't know if I'm boring you to death with with, with what I'm talking about here or uh, or not. Again, I have not said this often enough. I find this really interesting because it is getting more and more to the core of the of the logic that that is in all those rules and uh, more or less, if, if, if you're getting into this logic more and more, you don't have to learn this stuff by heart, but you know why and uh, how you have to behave. If you're passing a signal that has a distance signal functionality and you do not know what it would have shown you, then obviously you need to be prepared to stop at the next main signal, just as you have to do this when you are passing a dark distance signal and have to assume the worst but you don't need to drive on site all the way until you get there, for example. So this is getting more and more interesting, more and more complicated. And uh, as always, if you spot any errors and inconsistencies, don't hesitate to tell me in the comments. I'm always happy to learn and discuss things. And now actually back. Good thing we did not do this on rapid transit. Otherwise, this is, would have been a four-hour stream and good thing that I picked a springy scenario for the Maintalbahn and now we have a downpour also another rule I did not talk about this today if we are stopping at a stopping point like this one, 
No, it's not uh, already that. Between um, a distant signal and the main signal. Uh, there is a special rule for that as well, but we will get to this when we get there. Erica asks, have you played the New York route in Trains in World 2020? No, I have not. I actually started this game not before easy on the sea <laughs> thank you um, I also I only started playing this game when trains in world 2 was given away free on the epic game store and I did not play 2020 and I did not play the old one steer it was my first DLC or maybe rapid transit The New Haven route was that, right? Rapid is old. It is old, but sometimes I actually like going back to the old stuff and look at it, how it looks now in the new game, and what works and what doesn't, and holy moly, what is happening now? I might have touched the wrong button. pen corridor so yeah well the rapid transit is driving you crazy because the thousand hertz uh, magnets are always on even if if you're passing a totally green signal it has a distant signal functionality and when you're getting all the time thousand hertz uh, monitorings then you never get out of then you never get out of the restricted monitoring and then they set all the signals to red on every station they set the signals to red so you are always falling into a restricted 500 hertz monitoring so this is why you're really not getting along this line at all Some old stuff had more attention to detail, suspect. The other is totally true. And the rapid transit route has actually a lot of potential. Obviously, some things are not as elaborate as they are in the new DLCs, but still. Yes, and LZB is working there. I, I actually was not aware that they had a working LZB on Rapid Transit, but there is an LZB part. And it is really a nice and dynamic route with all the stopping in the underground uh, stations all the time. So if we could fix the PZB so that on the green signals you don't get a thousand hertz influencing, it might really be be cool. Nidertalbahn, the detail fucking blew you away, alright. Yeah, the Nidertalbahn is great. You only have to look on the file size. Nidertalbahn is, uh, I think, the, the second biggest file, at least that I had. There is an ICE in Bitterfeld. I saw it on the PIS, waited and was surprised. And did it actually arrive? Because I deliberately checked, there are no playable services for I ICEs. Yeah, it's big because the scenery is good. <laughs> yes, TSG did a great job there. I always have a bit the the impression that with the first route, the debut route, third party developers need to impress people. But this is not a bad thing at all.
Glanzstoffwerke. Ever wondered what, what, what kind of a station name this is? Glanzstoffwerke. Can, can translate it to shiny fabric factory. Glanzstoffwerke. And uh, as far as I know, it was originally a, f a factory or a belonged to a, a bigger firm that produced like artificial yarn that had this shiny optic. And now it is, I think, some industrial park. But originally it was actually a shiny fabric that they built there. Careful, we're passing a VR zero. Cannot accelerate beyond the 80. And also have to prepare for the 500 hertz. Theodora says, I recommend the music of Joe Hisashi Summer when playing the Talban in summertime. Epic 10 out of 10 for him. I have to try. Here's another train that we delayed. Obernburg Elsenfeld. Spectre has to run. Have a great evening, everyone. Yes, thank you for staying with me and have a great evening, too. But it looks nice, it looks very nice this DLC, they got the lighting in a way that it does not look that whitewashed anymore, even with the fog. Oh no, that was the wrong side. Always a problem if you're looking at the thread from the front and hit the corresponding button. Problem is... We are in a restricted 500 hertz, that means not faster than 20. Even though the signal that was red when we got here. And now for some reason, it stopped. It is still the 500 hertz lamp on, but it stopped doing the alternate flashing and now it starts again. What the heck? I have not been able to explain this behavior so far. So now our 500 hertz should stop lighting up. Maybe there are two 500 hertz magnets that account for this weird behavior. No, I'm out of it. Where is the code for your coupler? They are all only using it in winter time. And Pocket Snickers, hey, see you. nice to see you. I, I didn't know you found your right and left so difficult with the doors. <laughs> well, it's actually not difficult. This is the problem with the muscle memory. The 
typically when I'm sitting in the driver's seat here and uh, then my fingers do this on their own, hitting the button for left or hitting it for right. And sometimes when I'm using external cameras and looking at my train from the front, being like 180 degrees around, then the muscle memory gets it wrong. So a good thing that I'm not driving trains in real life and be able to watch at myself with an external camera while doing so. And the code for the coupler. They are only using this in winter time, someone said on the forums. So nice touch. If you were driving trains in real life and also saw yourself outside, that would be a much bigger problem. <laughs> That's true. That is completely true. LF6 for 100, okay. <coughs> the 100 is not a problem for us. Actually, you still have to wait a bit. We're just approaching Klein Wallstadt. I wonder if this is close to Groß Wallstadt. It used to be quite big in handball. Hey! Yes, the dogs want out, but I already have been out three times with you, Chili. You don't need to sit at the door. You have to wait until we are done with the stream here. <laughs> Opinion on Falmod. <laughs> you played with the dog today. That's great. Opinion on full hut? Well, I don't have an opinion on the full hut because I'm never using it anyway. We have here one of the very rare situations where we still have a platform that people need to pass across the rails. Or typically ask for specific safety measures. Why you call yourself Tiger Ways? Well, Tiger has been my online name like forever. And Tiger Ways is like, well, British Railways. So my artificial fixtures railway carrier is called Tigerways, obviously. Erika Gant is a random bullshit name, originally Eric Gant because it sounded a little arrogant. <laughs> All right. And where is the smooth forehead coming from then? So what did you do with the dog city radar then? Play catch with a ball? 
or play. Even in some major stations here, level crossing between platforms for people like that is a common sight. Oh yeah, I understand that. Maybe this is a thing for another stream. In the rules here, you can sometimes read something about a person called ein Reisenden Sicherer. So obviously, someone in charge of making sure that the passengers that are sometimes called Reisende are not run over. But I did not read up on this in particular. Smooth forward is when I said he has a smooth forehead in Barry B. Hop's chat. It was a horrible <laughs> picture. <laughs> okay. He laughed his ass off. Congratulations for that then. Oh yeah, fetch with sticks. That's cool. You would have liked this chili, right? You can never stop playing fetch with sticks or balls or whatever people like to throw for you. Sulzbach is the next station. I remind you of a Czech YouTuber, or CD Raider reminds you of a Czech YouTuber, because he is a Czech YouTuber. Then you scratched him behind the ears. Oh yeah, you would have liked this too, Chile. Getting scratched behind the ears, this is what I'm actually doing with her. Coincidence or co Well, I guess his check is better than mine, then. Someone said check, yes. So your high has died down, that is good to hear. I'm really relieved that you lived through this high without anything too bad happening. <laughs> Scratching behind the ears is a cheat code for dogs, yeah. And horses too, for example. Chili, 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 chili. I still have to stop my train here and read the chat everything at the same time. Go easy on me. Chili is the name of my dog. Is that Chili from Bluey? No, I don't know. Her she, she's written with a Y at the end. Chili like Chili Gonzalez, the jazz musician. But I did not invent the name, it was already the name that she had when I got her. now uh, I wasn't aware that this line is actually taking so long to drive for probably the line does not take long to drive at all but it is just that I talked so long about the presentation today pocket singers is asking what type of dog is she she's a Belgian shepherd cross uh, Dutch shepherd <laughs> <laughs> type of dog. Well, I was ask, uh, I was uh, answering what breed is she, right? Um, what type of dog is she? She's very... She's 
she's very energetic. She wants to play and learn and work all the time. She's super nice and super clingy. And she is biggish, black, has a loud voice, and tends to scare people. That would be the type of dog that she is. Malinois, yes. Big dogs tend to look scary. Well, it is especially her her loud voice and her energy that tends to scare people a bit. But she has a very, very tender soul. You have a dog that never lived. Well, better than none at all, huh? <laughs> and you found a glitch with the 38 stock. Actually, funny is that I got for that dog a training vest with your logo on it. That's cool. So, does it appear on YouTube now? And you exit seat, you board the roof. Interesting. And you have two cats. Well, cats are... Well, there is always this thing about dog persons and cat persons. But to be honest, how can... Even if you are more a dog person, you cannot do anything else that f than, than finding cats cute. So cats are cute. They are irresistible. But they, they never do what you tell them. On Facebook there is a photo. Oh. AG is probably not uh, awake anymore. So I have to... Cats are uh, kind of ugly. Now fish, fish are cute. All right. Ah, cats are cute. <coughs> but play catch with a cat. <laughs> play catch with a fish. It's a different game of catch that you play with a fish. Aschaffenburg Süd. That means there are only three stations left, Chile. Then we can go out. Cats operate on their own time. Well, you cannot blame them for it. Chile, Chile, I got an LF6. I have to adhere to that. It's an 80. That means I have to acknowledge it anyway. Even though we are hardly faster than 80 only if they are if they have mood if they are in the mood to play with you so no chili gave up for no That always sounds dangerous. <laughs> so we are on a line that allows us to go 80, so there is no point in releasing from the monitoring, even though it would be possible at the moment. 
Does Chili love trains too? asks Theodorus. I don't think so. She's more a car's dog. She likes to travel in the car. I once traveled with our then three dogs on a bus and this was quite annoying. Not only for the people around us, but also for me. All the time, some dog sniffing somewhere else. Boy, you Three dogs on a bus sounds like a nightmare, yeah. I wasn't aware that I had to pay, uh, that I had to buy children tickets for the dogs, so I actually had to buy three children's tickets for my three dogs. This nine does not need acknowledging, but nevertheless hitting the acknowledge button once too often does not hurt at all. 500 hertz. Did they thank the driver? I don't think so. I think they just ran out. They were happy that they were released from this confinement. And again in a restricted 500 hertz. And still raining, raining, raining. Aschaffenburg Süd, Chile. There is only Aschaffenburg uh, University or something like this, and then the main station. And then we are done. Again, not faster than 20. But this should actually end at the signal. Yes, and now we can release, hopefully. stay below the 80 just in case we're getting a new 1000 hertz yeah there is one that we're getting here so hopefully the restricted element already ended a nice VR2 and it is on again and it is restricting us luckily not in the restricted way only to the 80. Here's another music su suggestion for summer virtual. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Not reading the chat. But this is a situation now where you actually have to stop at a halt the point after passing the distance signal and before you get to the corresponding main signal and that is a situation where there is a specific rule for it just in case that 
the main signal switched to a red while we are sitting here at the station we have to approach the next main signal in a way that we are able to stop in front of it so summer virtual train drive spirited away 2001 the name of life instrumental piano inochi no name all right we will have to listen to all of this and uh, unfortunately aj is already asleep so she can't get this for me on the run on the fly so restricted thousand hertz that means restricted to 40 we cannot release because the yellow lamp is still on and since we stopped between the distance signal and the main signal we have to approach the next main signal in a way that we are able to stop in front of it without a warning now it's possible to release but it would not be a good idea probably because we are getting a new thousand hertz before the restricted thing ended that means it would have come on with limit to 40 again for well, this is good to have these little lights Austrians have w what little lights do Austrians have The repeaters are yeah. die Signalnachahme. getting a bit laggy here's the 40 on the switch that we got the HP2 for and see the radar is going to Wien next week that is cute Wien is a schöne Stadt ah die das erlaubt das hier So, no point in releasing from the monitoring since we are getting a 500 hertz soon, like now. Here is a Kennlicht Zugdeckung signal that allows us to pass it. Why we are passing it, I'm not entirely sure since this train is going back. We probably would have stopped at the Zugdeckung signal so that the other half of the platform can be used for trains coming from and returning into the other direction. Oh! Now I yanked it into emergency finally. Well, the radar likes screeching brakes. <coughs> Invisible Kennlicht. At least you are under the roof. At least I am. And I did not pass this. So, what we've talked about here, for example, is the old version of the Assad signal with the three lamps on the HP signal of the HV system 
Chili, 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 don't nudge me all the time. I will get to you in a couple of minutes. So that was that. Unfortunately, we were a bit late, but nevertheless, it is a nice route. It looks good. The lighting works out. There's a lot of rain all the time, but well, maybe this is just coincidence. And some people seem to enjoy it. Okay. Thank you very much for bearing with me uh, in, in this um, quite complicated presentation that does not have too much connection with the, the game itself. Maybe in future times we will see more um, replacement signals as that signale and get some scripted or random situations where we have to adhere to this kind of signal. And um, okay, here the writing for the little signs is a bit too big. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. Take care until we get together again. It was a very lively chat today. Theodoros CD Radar is tired to <laughs> pocket snickers. Eric again. And Spectre is already has already left. So thank you very much. Take care. And um, well if you like let me know what you think about the streams of that kind where we're discussing stuff that has not not too much to do with the game. Our train is transforming into a shunting service as you can see. Because we are getting the SH1 on the HP1. And here actually the second red one uh, got switched off together with the SH1. Great. This, this does not always happen in the train sim world. Thanks guys. See you around. Bye bye.